Okay, Tim, greatest mini camp in Vikings history or greatest mini camp in NFL history? Three words: Super Bowl, homeboy. <laughs> it's just how it is. Randy Moss <laughs> affected the lexicon of Minnesota sports fans more than almost any other figure in Minnesota sports history. For a guy who never talked, his words his re- words resonated, Tim. Yeah, well, fans loved him. Yes, and, and that's really what mattered. Um, you know, he was actually just down at Brian Robinson's fishing tournament in Wabasha. So, I uh, you know. I thought it was good of him to show up for that. Apparently, he got the highest bid for people that want to uh, go fishing with uh, some of the different Vikings. And I'm, you know, sure he's he is a big fisherman, so I'm sure his uh, his his boat apparently actually won it too, which of course he predicted. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't win it with the Vikings, so <laughs> that's kind of the downside. Yeah, he's got a fishing title to his name, though. Well, good for him. Yeah. Uh, hey, let's uh, let's introduce the show now that we're done babbling. Uh, this is the Viking Update podcast, part of the TalkNorth.com podcast network. This is our most listened to show and uh, one of our longest running shows. We love doing it. We do it year round, as you know. Thanks to Twill in the Dining Galleria, TwillMN.com, Twill on Instagram. Uh, I'll tell you more about Scott Dayton Shop here in a little bit. Thanks also to Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent in Champlin. Uh, let's start. And also, do me a favor. If you're listening to the show, please download before you listen. It makes a difference in our business model, and we, we know that uh, the people listening to the network actually care about the network. It's one of the cool things about doing, doing our own thing here and not being ordered by uh, some corporation. Unless I'm a cor- Am I a corporation? I don't think I'm a corporation. Uh, maybe LLC. <laughs> yeah, that's as close as I'm going to get. I don't know. What, let's put it this way. I don't know what LLC means, so that's probably a sign of where we are. Uh, Lacron Treadwell remains one of the most intriguing figures of the off season because you just don't know what you're going to get. What do you think we're going to get from him? What I love is that nobody can get his name right, and you, I think you just kind of stubble Lacron. Lacron. You know, I just I think I need a large <laughs> glass of water. Is and, what I need. And I remember when uh, Spielman, I think it was when he was introducing him after drafting him, said, uh, "What was it, Le- Laquan Twadwell?" <laughs> <laughs> so it was, was kind of like Elmer Fudd up at the podium. <laughs> so I, I I get a kick that people have a hard time pronouncing Laquan Treadwell. You know what? From now on, it's LT. Oh, oh. Yeah, just like him. It's just LT. Yeah. Well, yep, one of the best uh, players in NFL history. Uh, just... Two of the best players in NFL history. LaDainian Tomlinson oh, and yes. Lawrence Taylor. No, I always go Lawrence Taylor when oh, I yes. think of LT. That's that, we're old. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, Treadwell last year got a little bit of hype in training camp, or in mini camp and OTAs, and it was sort of this, well, he looked better than he did last year. Now he looks like he's just playing comfortable, which to me is the most important thing for him because he's a guy really hard on himself. Um, he kind of has that, almost seems like he's down in the dumps a lot of times, just with, uh, you know, kind of almost feeling sorry for himself. But he's a really hard worker. And I think if if he is targeted as much during the regular season as he was during OTAs in minicamp. And that's not saying that, you know, he's targeted more than Thielen or Diggs, but they're not shying away from him. And I think that's really important to try to build his confidence. He's never going to, as they say, take the top off of a defense because he doesn't have that deep speed, but he can be a good intermediate, big bodied route runner. And uh, if he does that, That's going to allow guys like Diggs and Thielen to see more single coverage than than maybe they got uh, last year. So I I would put Laquan Treadwell in the most improved category for this OTA minicamp session. And if he plays well, well, where does he fit? He's, I mean, he's the number three receiver right now. I thought coming in, Kendall Wright would be that guy. And right now, it is Treadwell, and then that means hey, you've got two other versatile receivers like Thielen and Diggs where either of them can play in the slot and be as effective as they are on the outside. So I think that that gives them a nice mix. It keeps defenses guessing a bit. And, uh, you know, if if they get Treadwell to be anywhere what he was or anywhere close to what he was at Old Miss, where he was really dominating in the SEC, 
you know, that's that's going to be great for the Vikings, especially since he's got another year after this left on his contract, and they can kind of see where things go. Was Kendall Wright not as impressive as he was expected to be? Is that part of it? Um, I, I didn't see enough of him with the first-team offense to really know. Um, you know, I... You know, I've said for years that I thought they underutilized Jarius Wright. And from what I saw out of Jarius Wright versus Kendall Wright in the, the slot, I like what I saw out of Jarius Wright better than what I saw out of Kendall. Now, that said, you know, he's only a couple of months into learning this offense. They were just installing it. So what you see in OTAs and minicamp can oftentimes change. I mean, that's... A lot more true, I think, with linemen than receivers. So, you know, when you're judging receivers, I think it's a little bit more legitimate in OTAs and minicamp. And right now, you know, I would say Wright's a solid number four guy, but Treadwell's clearly ahead of him. Yeah, it is, Kendall Wright's an interesting guy, too, because he's had some peaks and some games in his career where you go, oh, wow, this guy's special. Yep. He never really sustains it. Right. Uh, last year, he had a very good year, a very efficient year working out of the slot. And maybe he's, you know, gained some maturity and maybe he's developed as a player, but he's not a sure thing. No, and I, I mean, they're not paying him to be that, right. that you know, really expensive receiver. They can't really afford that type of guy at a number three or number four receiver. But uh, he does bring experience. He's a former number one uh, first round draft pick. Um, I think he's got a thousand yard receiver receiving mm-hmm. season to his credit. And then, you know, several in that six to seven hundred yard category which is kind of what Jarius Wright could have been if he was used often enough right uh, let's do some best and some uh, some highlights from the mini camp let's start with the best play I you know the one that stood out was really early in OTA is when Stefan Diggs was probably 50 yards downfield cousins hit him perfectly Diggs laid out dough for the the ball I mean the t- the coverage wasn't bad. Um, it was all just a really well thrown ball and an incredible diving catch, full speed. So uh, Diggs had that, and he also had a couple of other diving catches. So I would put him as in kind of the maybe the player of uh, OTAs and minicamp, if you will. Uh, I just he looks like um, well, we know he's a guy that's always had the talent. He looks like a guy that could take it to the next level this year, whether that's you know, another new quarterback and a guy that really trusts him or whether it's I'm in a contract year and this is the time to to really get the biggest contract of my career. Either way, good news for the Vikings. Yeah, I would expect him to have a really big year. It just it feels like it's time. And really the only thing that's held him back has been durability. He's just missed too many games. And I think, you know, last even at the beginning of last year, I don't know that defenses respected Adam Thielen as much as they should have. Mm-hmm. And I think with him being, you know, a 1,200 yard receiver last year, that as the year went on, he got more and more attention. And if that's going to continue, then Diggs is going to really have some opportunities to take advantage of his, you know, his matchups and his speed. His, he's just so quick and kind of slippery um, and can also get downfield. So I think with Cousins not being afraid to throw the ball downfield, um, that Diggs is going to find some of those deeper passes this year. Uh, we are next going to do uh, most surprising and most disappointing. I do want to thank Scott Dayton and his shop, Twill in the Dining Galleria, twillmn.com, Twill on Instagram. I was out there the other day with my wife, and we were looking around. And you know me. I mean, not, I, I'm not known as being a clothes horse at all. I'm wearing a T-shirt today. Uh, it's a Talk North T-shirt. But of course. It's pretty nice. Yeah. But, uh, but the funny thing is I go out there, and, and Scott's shop is known for its high-end stuff. But you walk in, and the whole front is just is comfortable stuff it's casual stuff it's golf shirts it's it's you know it's kind of the modern technology that makes a nice looking shirt really comfortable and breathable uh so and the other thing is he showed me a garment bag that folds into a duffel bag which like oh cool. might be for people who travel and yeah. it, that it might be the solution you know to, to all the problems you always have whenever you you bring kind of a clunky suitcase on a trip uh so there's just so much cool stuff and the other thing about scott is not only does he carry all the big brands and know the people who run those brands, he, he gives 
you know, tryouts to these smaller brands you might not have ever heard of that make really cool stuff. So it's just a, gr- it's a great vibe in that shop. I recommend stopping by the Dining Gallery and walking into Twill and checking it out. Hi, I'm Stacy Suhan. I love Twill, Scott Dayton's shop in the Adina Galleria. Twill takes the stress out of shopping by offering updated traditional fashion. I know that if Jim goes in there shopping alone, I will like what he buys, whether it's pajamas, flannel shirts, or suits. I plan to recommend Twill to my daughter when she has to buy wedding party gifts and attire. Twill in the Adina Galleria will bring your fashion game to a championship level. Okay, most surprising. I was surprised once we got to minicamp, got past OTAs, at how much Dalvin Cook was doing with the offense and how good he looked doing it. Now, he was still wearing the brace on his knee, which, you know, at this point he should be. I don't know if that's going to continue in the regular season. He may want to take it off. Who knows? Some guys are more comfortable playing with it than others. But, you know, as as things progressed in OTAs, he's starting to do a little bit more, a little bit more. And then once we got to minicamp, all of a sudden he's in on all the full-team stuff where he's making cuts, he's, he's making reads with the offensive linemen in front of him. And at first I thought, okay, I haven't really seen him plant on that knee and – you know, he he would plant maybe going to the right, put the foot in the ground and go. To the left, it wasn't as much. And then all of a sudden I started seeing that too. So I think he's very close to being full go once training camp starts. I mean, really to the naked eye, I couldn't I couldn't see that they were holding him back at all in uh in mini camp. So that's a very good sign for the Vikings. We'll do most disappointing next. Do want to uh, offer one more uh, business note. If you'd like to advertise with this program or on the network, you can reach me at jsouhan47 at gmail.com. Uh, we're starting to fill up our advertising roster for the fall. If you'd like to get in, get in quickly. Also, we'd love to do this show live somewhere in the Egan area during training camp. If you know of a bar or a restaurant that might want to host us, uh, we'll bring a Viking fan base into the uh into your place and have a lot of fun doing the shows live uh most disappointing i really wanted to see what you know mid-round pick tyler conklin could do tight end that the vikings drafted and there there wasn't a lot of opportunity for him he was hurt and so i i don't know what's going on there whether uh, my assumption is he's going to be fine and ready for for training camp um but I wanted to see what he could do in DeFilippo's offense. I mean, you talk to Kyle Rudolph, David Morgan. Both those guys are really excited about what DeFilippo was able to do, especially when he was the coordinator in Cleveland, where Gary Barnage, who kind of right. came out of nowhere, had a 1,000-yard season. And so I think Conklin, because of whatever injury he was dealing with, really lost out on an opportunity to show what he can do. Now, you know, he's going to have six weeks of training camp and preseason to to show it as well. But uh, I was just hoping to, to see a little bit out of him and just wasn't able to. So that was a little disappointing. Most concerning? Everson Griffin. Um, yeah. You know, he didn't. He didn't do anything in OTAs or minicamp when it came to any sort of team activities. He was he was doing a little bit, of going through some of the drill work, but he wasn't ever, you know, in a helmet ready to, to go out there and, and do the full team stuff. And, you know, initially I thought, well, maybe it's the plantar fasciitis yet. It looks like it's a knee. He's got a wrap on his knee. And so where that came from, I don't know because, you know, there was no indication that the knee was bothering him in the uh, in the playoffs it was all about the plantar fasciitis so you know at at his age you know he's been around a while now um you start to wonder okay is there just some wear and tear that's taking place there and are they going to have to you know sort of monitor his reps fortunately for the vikings they have a lot of younger defensive ends plus brian robison there Mm -hmm. that that i think they'll be okay if they do put him on sort of a uh, if a pitch count, um, I, it's just a little bit disappointing when, or concerning when you've got a guy that is such a high impact guy and he's struggling with an injury that you didn't really see him have during the last season, even. Yeah, that is a concern, and he's he's a big key for this team. Oh, you know, I mean, his quickness is it's still incredible mm-hmm. right off the snap. He. I think he's one of the fastest in the NFL, just getting off the snap. Now, you know, sometimes it causes a, a jump, you know, offsides. But 
he uh, 